Okay, so welcome back. Now today I'm going to introduce a series that I will be releasing in the near future where we show you how to convert your Arduino into this oscilloscope. And you can see it's got a lot of oscilloscope functionality that we'll talk about. And it's basically grabbing this data from a signal generator I have hooked up to my Arduino. You see these two wires coming into the Arduino and it's just converting those and sending it over the USB port to my computer. And this application is plotting it on this oscilloscope chart. Now you can see there's no extra external hardware required. I've just got my wires coming in from the signal generator. So all of this is done in software. Honestly, the, the programming language you implement this in is fairly irrelevant. We're going to use C-sharp only because I prefer it for a bunch of reasons. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the design of this and the design concepts and generate a simple block diagram of the functionality. And once we've got that, it's going to be very, very simple to apply that to any programming language where you can make a little user interface. Because when you consider the functionality of this, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, basically, I'm going to open a COM port and grab the data on a regular basis from the Arduino. And all this application is going to do is really convert that into an array of time and voltage values. And once you've got that array, you can do a lot of processing. You can figure, for example, we've got the frequency measurement. We've got the maximum voltage, the average voltage. Um, we've got AC and DC coupling. We've got a bunch of functionality here, but really it's pretty straightforward and you can do it in any programming language. All you do is convert that to an array and send that out to the chart and just do that over and over again and keep refreshing the screen. And that's about it. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, one of the great things about this um, project is we're going to learn about oscilloscopes. And in order to simulate an oscilloscope, one of the great things is you have to learn about how it works. And we're going to be building it from scratch. So we're going to have to understand the base functionality of an oscilloscope, some of the challenges, some of the limitations. And it's going to be a great opportunity to learn how, to, um, how oscilloscopes work. One of the reasons I write, really enjoy um, working with simulator software like this, basically simulating an oscilloscope, is because it gives you a great opportunity to learn about things. For example, we've talked much about LT Spice which is a simulator for electrical and electronic circuits. A great way to build up a circuit and change the input values or the variables or the, the components and see how the output changes. And it's a great way to learn about things. And it's certainly the case with this oscilloscope project. We're going to have to learn about all the basic functionality of an oscilloscope, the timing, the scan rates, what does all that mean? And um, it's going to be a great opportunity. Again, kind of irrelevant what programming language you employ with this. So what I want to do is first go through some of the, the basic functionality of this. And then in the next video, we're going to get into the detailed design of, you know, a basic block diagram of how this works. And we're going to start looking at some of the challenges and timing issues and those kinds of things. So if you look at this, you can see I've got a triangle wave coming in from my function generator. And it's updating every uh, maybe tenth of a second, right? So it's updating multiple times a second. And I've got a 10 millisecond uh, scan time or a, a burst of 10 milliseconds worth of data. And I'm allowing the user to define how many samples in each scan. So in this 10 millisecond scan, it's got 400 samples. And I can show that because I've got a checkbox up here where I can apply markers. So each sample has got a little red dot. So let me click on that and you can see all these little red dots which represent each of the 500 samples in this scan. So those 500 samples are being updated every scan, every tenth of a second or so. So um, basically what this does, of course, is it identifies the COM port that your, your Arduino is on. And it will open the port. And once the port is open, it allows the user to say, okay, okay, how many samples do I want for each scan? It's presently set on 500. Um, and also, what's the Arduino VREF? We talked about in the previous video. I'll encourage you to take a look at that if you're not sure what that means. You can also tell this program whether your Arduino sketch is written to use a high speed mode for the analog read. Now, 
What that means is the default analog read that is going to be grabbing each sample of data takes quite a bit of time and it's very low speed analog read. So this allows you to modify that and we'll show you how to modify that to get, get a much higher sample rate on the Arduino so that you can update this a lot faster and look at higher frequencies. So that's a, a nice option that you can enable if you've got this sketch written to, uh, to support that. So once we got that, you can just hit the start button and it will read this data and plot it on a regular basis. And you can see it's measuring frequency, maximum volts, average volts. And like I say, once you've got this data in a time value array, which we do here, uh, you can massage the data. You can, you can do a lot of analysis of the data um, to your heart's content. The functionality of this is that I've got, um, I can adjust the vertical scale. I can scroll that down and expand the vertical scale. I can uh, adjust the horizontal or time scale. Right now I've got 0 to 10 milliseconds. I can increase that to 200 milliseconds. So like I said, I've got, I can, you can show markers to show what the actual sample uh, points are. You can also do a single shot, which is a toggling button where I can toggle it and it basically freezes the display and stops updating so you can look at it in more detail. And I can also do AC and DC coupling. And if you're familiar with oscilloscopes, you know the DC coupling allows the AC and DC components to go through and to be shown on the screen. If I select AC, it removes the DC component and just shows me um, any variation around zero. So here we've got uh, plus and minus about 1.78 volts. So that's the basic functionality. I've also included a very, very important feature called the debug feature. And especially in something like this where timing is going to be very important, that we understand how long each part of the process takes. Uh, and we're going to see that in the design phase. Um, I've got a debug mode that prints out in this text box Every, uh, every scan, every burst of data, it tells me how long each part of the process is taking. So for example, the total scan plus plot time to update this display after you've gathered the data from the Arduino, in this case is just under 100 milliseconds. And I've added a fixed buffer time. And so the total interval to update this is about 0.1 seconds. And then as I change the samples per scan, that could change. As I change this uh, scan time, you can see that changes. So um, it's a very good way to have dynamic updating of this to make sure you've got it optimized. So we're going to talk a lot about timing and optimization and how, uh, how oscilloscopes work and how we're going to have to um, do that on the Arduino. Also, what we're going to talk about is some of the capabilities and limitations of the Arduino. As we mentioned, by default, it's not really very good uh, for doing oscilloscopes because everything's kind of slow. Uh, we're going to talk about how to get a very high speed COM port above what you may expect can be done. And we're also going to talk about how to speed up this um, analog read time and a bunch of other things. So I encourage you to uh, stick around and watch the series. Um, a great opportunity to learn about oscilloscopes and some of the internal um, limits and capabilities of the Arduino. Anyway, hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.